We are going to be talking about a uh, location tonight that is near and dear to our hearts. Uh, we've been going out there for a couple years now. It's one of our most active locations we go to. It's the Madison Seminary in Ohio. Madison is a whole new kind of location when it comes to the type of activity and the feeling you get when you're there. I know that the asylum floor for Madison is really kind of the, the hub of the activity, I would think, in the building. We've spent a lot of time up there in the last couple years, and we've had some of the the crazy experiences that we've ever had um, in any location up there. I know that the asylum floor for me kind of changed the way I look at paranormal investigating and, and looked at things that can happen to you on an investigation. So this place is well known in the paranormal community and, and people will travel across the entire country to get there. It, it's so funny because no matter how much you do this or how many times you investigate somewhere or the same location, it's a, it's crazy. You know, there's there's no way to explain it. There's no beating around the bush. There's nothing to it. It's paranormal. It's something that's not supposed to happen. Not supposed to happen. Not supposed to happen. Supposed to happen. Welcome to the Madhouse. My name is JP Doyle. I've been investigating the paranormal for about. 11 years or so. It is now 6.31 a.m. and I'm on my way to Alabama to meet up with a good friend of mine. Yeah, I'm super excited. It's a long trip, about 20 hours total. It's gonna take two days to get there, but it's totally gonna be worth it. Gonna be worth it, gonna be worth it, gonna be worth it, gonna be worth it. All right, so uh, update, I am just now in Louisiana. I love Texas, finally. I'm super, super excited. The anticipation is building. I can't wait to meet Alex again. That's gonna be a lot of fun. It is 1.43. I've been on the road for a while, but actually it's, it hasn't been too bad. It's a lot to think about. It's a lot of focus and um, just making sure I'm in the right mental and head space because I don't wanna go into this building completely vulnerable and unprepared. I'm in Alabama, finally. This is gonna be the ending to the first half of my trip to Ohio. Ready to get out of this van, get my legs moving. And then tomorrow, do it all over again. What's up, man? Got my sleeping bag, it's all in green. Are you ready? No. It's a long drive. <laughs> I'm Alex Bobulinski. I have been a paranormal enthusiast as long as I can remember. And I'm investigating the last several years very heavily. It's gonna be insane. We're gonna be braving the elements as well as the spiritual energy that is in this place. 6.30 a.m. Been on the road for three hours, still have six more to go. Alex and JP got there last night. They were texting me saying the place is extremely active. It is the real deal. All right, we made it finally. Literally got chills all over as we were pulling up because JP heard a voice in the car. He goes by Alex Bob, and I swear I heard a man's voice go, Bob, and I can't tell where it came from. I don't know if it came from over the radio, if it was just like in the van, but we were like right down the street and I heard, Bob. So I try to time my bathroom breaks around the rest stops. The previous rest stop was 54 miles. 54 miles to the next rest stop. And when I get there, the sign says closed. The next one was 20 miles away. I almost didn't make it those extra 20 miles. All right, so just got in the car, headed towards Madison Seminary, meeting up with JP, Keith, and Alex. It's gonna be a good time. Uh, I haven't been out here since May of this year. This will be my fourth trip out to Madison. Each time I've gone, I've had some, some pretty crazy experiences out here. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to, to getting back in there, especially with a new group of people, see what kind of activity we get with each person's distinct style of investigating. You know, everybody goes at it a different way. And this is gonna be the first time I've met any of them. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how things go and how we work together and uh, what we can get, what we can come up with because Madison always delivers. It always does. 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 It always does
I am currently about 30 minutes away from Madison Seminary. It's raining right now, which is great. But I am super excited. 30 minutes away from one of the most haunted locations. Let's do it. Should be there at about 5.30. We'll meet up with the guys and we'll get going. We'll see what happens, so I'm looking forward to it. Oh man, we're getting so close, dude. Yeah, we're getting close. I can feel, I can feel it. My nerves are starting to get all, my, like, my hair, my chill bumps on my arms. Not yet, but I'll feel it when, we, when we're pulling up. Yeah, for sure. It's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. Keith just got here. We're super excited. Yes, we are. Uh, we've, we've never met him before. We've known him for years. But, years. Uh, this is our first time meeting him, so. K Cam. Let's go I'm out excited. There. Yeah, let's go. Keith. What's up? What's up, man? Finally. It's nice to meet you. You too, man. How you doing, man? Good, good, good. Jesus. Uh, what's up, man? Nice man, this see. place is insane. We did a little bit of filming last night mm -hmm. in the in this crazy attic. We came a long way to see you guys. What did that say? Hello there. Is that what it said? Hello there. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. Whoa. Miserable? Who's miserable? Man, I got the chills over here. Even though it's freezing, I still, like, it's a different, different type of chill, if that makes sense. Do you like me and Alex being up here? Oh man, they're familiar with this device because usually it takes a while for the spirits to use this whenever I take it other places. Dude, it's lighting up like crazy. From people? Can't wait to show you everything, but uh, an intense night. <laughs> it's just, it's just an intense, intense place. So we got a lot to do. I can't wait, man. This place looks awesome. Let's do it. I think Steve is here. I saw a car pull up. For real? Yeah. Steve, what's, what's up? What's up, man? Yeah, man. Where's your jacket? Now I'm from New York. How you doing? Nice to meet you. You too. Steve, what's up, man? How you doing, man? We've made our rounds, we showed Keith around, you know the place already. Yeah, let's just kind of hang out and, and yeah. start, start soon. I'm for it. All right, man. As the team is getting their equipment ready for the first night of investigating, a familiar spirit makes his presence known to an unsuspected team member. Also, just for documentation, just document the, uh, the water drops. Yeah, I was, we were in the other building over there. And you guys were actually having a conversation about the number of cameras we had. You asked him how many we had. Yeah. And he had said s And right as he said that, I felt like a water had, you know, some water had dropped in my head. So I looked up to see if the ceiling was dripping, because it is raining. There's double checking right now to make sure there's no water issue, but there's definitely no stain or anything on the ceiling. It doesn't look like there was any water coming from there, so. Anything? No. no. He felt something no, hit he his felt, head. Yeah, yeah no. he was standing right where you are. Mm -hmm. Felt the water drop hit his head. Didn't know the history of the water drop. Then he moved up a few feet and he was messing around with this stuff right here and he felt it a second time. Really? Right. Because the first thing, yeah, we look for discoloration, nothing. Right. And That's I, weird for him to at least feel it though. Yeah, he felt it twice. And I came over where he was standing. I was feeling around the carpet and looking up. I didn't see any signs of water. No, it's dry in here. That's yeah. weird. That's weird. So he's a, he's a little freaked out now. And then you guys obviously have a much deeper history with all that stuff. I didn't know anything about it until Hopefully then. that's the case. <laughs> so, I didn't know anything about it. Right now we are with Adam Kimmel. He is the owner. Also, he is the host and creator of the show Resident Undead. Thanks first for letting us come, man. It's, we can't, we're super excited, so. Well, first of all, it's great seeing you. Houston, Texas, okay? Yeah. Texas is in Madison right now. And Brote, who's been here before, one time, you've already seen the changes, yep. but for everyone you're gonna see, we're taking you right into ground zero to a lot of things that are going on here. But I'm just glad to have you here. Yeah, That's man, I'm super, I'm super excited. And um, there's a lot of interesting rooms in this, in this building, and we could go all night talking about it, but let's pick out the ones that we think are special, and uh, we're gonna start with this room, right? So yes. what exactly is this? So where we're gonna start here, this is the laundry wing. And when I say laundry wing, a lot of people are gonna be like, you know what, really? 
Um, we have a lot of activity here, and the reason for that, I think, is you're looking at one spot that was 24-7 operation between 1940 and 1970. Women constantly, you know, were cleaning. And you gotta think about this, 70,000 square feet. This is a small city, so there was a huge operation. A lot of activities here, and then I'm also gonna take you around the corner to where we believe a woman was buried in the floor. Now, I've only had the property for two years, all right? But within that two years, we get a lot of locals that come through, and I get it, these, these may be urban legends, but there have been more than one person come forward and say, have you ever heard the story about the woman buried in your floor at the turn of the century? Now, I have nothing documented on this, but I've had enough reliable sources come and say that there was an affair between a teacher and a teacher's aide. And when this was being constructed by the Women's Relief Corps around 1900 or so, this cement was being poured out here. He ended up killing her and burying her before that affair could become, you know, no. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. We believe it's right here. I had a guy come in with dowsing rods who specializes in this stuff. Out of the blue goes, hey, um, I go to grave sites that are unmarked. I can tell you the gender, where the feet and the head are and all this stuff. This guy that came had no idea about this but he came up to me during an event and said, do you want to know where that woman's buried in your basement? I'm like, came right to this room where we had suspected from the stories we'd heard. And he had said, the woman's head was right here on this spot and her feet would be right about where you're standing. So she's laying right here. When you go back outside, it's perfect cement the whole way. This is the only room that has a lot of like slabs that are kind of torn and put together. So if it was going to happen and it was real, this would be the place I'd suspect. So the first time I filmed here was 2011. This was a place that was hard to get into. You had to know somebody who knew somebody to get in here. When I first came here, there was a sticky note that said Sarah's room on the door. There were toys scattered just like before. I assumed, without doing very little research at all, that clearly Sarah's room, toys, this must have belonged to a child. Right. So I, like many other investigators, tried to communicate with a spirit of a child. After the purchase and doing more homework, there's no record of a child ever dying here. The one person I talked to was saying that at the end of the health department, in the 70s or so, there was a woman in this area that had dementia. So she was 80 when she died, but she had that childlike mentality. Oh, yeah. And what we think is happening is literally this woman is communicating with us as if she's a child. I'll tell you what, we get tons of groups that come through here, a lot of public events. This is a hot spot, like guaranteed EVP hits. Yeah. It's been far and few where I've come through here and nothing, you know? Right, it's just, right. I think the spirits know this is one of your hubs. Right. That there is something possibly sinister or something that needs to stay in this closet and closed. Now, when the door is open, I guess activity spikes up. From my style of investigating, if it works, and you open that door tonight. Welcome to Ground Zero. This is the actual asylum of the Ohio Cottage, the top floor. Behind me is the rec room. As you can see, this wood we're standing on, over 100 years old. So turn of the century in 1940, this place was crowded with wicker wheelchairs. You had women that were very special needs. From reports of locals, I had a woman that was 80 years old, refused to come in the building. First thing she says to me, are you the boy that bought the nut house? I'm thinking, <laughs> well, if someone says that, you always say yes, always say yes. But she was telling me stories. When she was an eight-year-old girl, she would come here with her mother who would do laundry. And she said when they would drive away, women would be waving out these windows up here. And she knew this place was crammed with women, just crammed up here. One story that really stuck with her, that really bothered me as well, was she would always close her eyes when she was with her mother. Like always hold onto her dress, just close her eyes while her mother did her work. Well, one day. That light go off? Yeah, it died. Man, that thing's charged. That's weird. Not long at all. That thing lasts like six or seven hours. Yeah. Well, to finish that story though, she heard a noise while she was holding her mother's dress. And like I said, she never opened her eyes, but for some reason, she opened her eyes when this happened. They were lined up and she said it looked like chicken heads. Like all the women were up against the wall and their heads were bobbing like chickens and they were in a straight line to get medicine. So those were, I think, some of the conditions, turn of the century, even leading into it. But even when you look at this place here, this was not 
something happy. You can just tell. You can feel it, yeah. We walked through last night and we just felt sadness and depression. Yes. It's like I was telling him, all eyes are on you. Yes. We're the new kids here. Who's, who's the new guy? Who's the new guy? I have noticed when we try to really openly connect with them and, and really stretch out to talk to them, we will get a lot of evidence. But there is something around the corner. Unfortunately, it's, it's been drywalled over, but there was a message that creeped me out. Right on this wall, right here, now you see where they plastered it over, but underneath this, someone had taken a sharp object and kind of etched in here. It said, I've been here for 10 years. I know I'm never getting out. I know I'm going to die here. Steve had an experience. Um, one of those experiences that almost make you wonder or ponder why we continue to do what we do. But it's something you don't really think about until it happens to you and then it just changes the way you look at investigating completely and, and you know you're vulnerable and you don't yeah. really think about that until it happens and when I was here in May something happened down here and I haven't been back down here since obviously so. It was a retired police officer that wanted to stay anonymous. He worked here in the 80s when the police department was, was had the building. I just wanted to know what the upstairs looked like. And you know with police officers, they're very, they're very descriptive with their stuff. So the perfect person I could ask. I said, but there's always been a room that I've been very suspicious about that something was just wrong. Like when we walk through these rooms, you'll see there's something different about this first room that just always felt like an operating room. Something they were doing something in this room. Well. He's like, first room on the right. He goes, yeah, that room with the operating table. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't know anything about this. This was brought later, right? Right. He said one day he was grabbing files and he stood right in the doorway there and for 10 minutes stared right here. And he said there was a, a table similar, but not, a, a, not alike. It had the metal arm bars that went out like this. And instead of your leather couplings, it was actually another metal piece that went around and then you had a bolt to tighten it. He stared at that for 10 minutes, trying to wrap his head around what he was looking at. His conclusion was, this is some kind of torture device. What's really interesting is after he discovered this up here, I don't know if word got out, he might've talked to somebody else, within two weeks, that table vanished. And, and here's where it comes into dark research. Did we do the wrong thing by bringing this up here? Are we immortalizing the evil? There is something very suspicious about this room and our attention was caught to these marks here. Because for the longest time, if you look in these rooms, I didn't know how you'd fit a bed in here. You can see where the wood is worn away in this direction. So you had a metal rod going right here, and right here. Here's, I'm just gonna be raw and real on this. Either you have a patient in these beds shaking, right? And it's very, very strong, and it's shaking that bed back and forth, or, there were, there were things going on here, you know, someone may have been People taking advantage, taking advantage yeah. of them. And, and here's the thing, we have caught EVP saying that, you know, yelling, he raped me. Why the top floor? And I'm thinking, why not? If you wanted to have a functional facility, you would hide the unwanted up on, the, on this very top floor because then you have a functioning building in the basement, first right. and second, no one would ever know. You know, in conclusion, you're in a hotbed. I, I can just, even like as I'm walking through this with you guys, I can feel the chills changing back and forth. They're, they're curious, you know? They do love to be documented. They, we've shared their story with the world, but it's always interesting what's gonna come through though. I don't, you may learn something very, very disturbing. Uh, you know, maybe they picked tonight to talk about it. So well, and that's what I told him too. I said, you know, I, I've been here, this is my fourth trip out here now, and every time out here is different. Yes, it always changes. Well, I hope with the two nights that we're here, we can try to uncover some things that maybe you didn't know mm -hmm. and uh, love it. maybe love bring some closure to some of those questions you have. So um, thanks for having us, man. Again, Absolutely. cannot wait. Cannot Absolutely. wait. All right, let's do this. As the sun sets on the first day over Madison, Ohio, the team descends down into the basement of the Civil War building, which was used to house honor inmates from the Marysville Correctional Institution. Gary's on what we're doing now. We got some devices over here in the doorway that you can play with, let us know that you're here. Was that water back here? Did you hear that? I thought it was you. Immediately after the team heard the sound of the doorknob shake, 
The camera's onboard microphone captured the voice of a man saying, Get out. Was that water back here? Did you hear that? I thought it was you. That's what I heard. That's what it sounded like to me. There's something in here. Like moving around. I know, I just heard movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like pipes and stuff. I looked in here. Yeah. It like feels like you're gonna like I'm gonna walk by these stalls. Yeah. And somebody's gonna pop out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you're just anticipating it to happen. Did you hear a voice? I did. No. I just heard a voice. Some female. Yeah. As Steve makes his way towards the shower, the team hears the disembodied voice of a female. Is this the voice of one of the honor inmates asking who this man is entering their shower? JP. Yeah. Can you raise your hand one more time like you just did? You were just pointing, right? Like when you pointed up like to hear the... No, I didn't point. Well, let me see you wave your hand behind me. Do it again. I turned uh, like this. Yeah, because I saw it. Was it main move? I thought I saw a shadow, like an arm, on behind Steve, oh, on that on that wall. Oh, but look where I'm standing, dude. Like your shadow is very diffused. Yeah. And what I thought I saw in front of me behind Steve was like a, a skinnier, sharper black yeah. shadow. Is there anybody back there? It's not a great feeling in here. Is anybody back there? Is anybody back there? A skinny arm, a woman's arm. Yeah. I saw it. That's what it, you saw it too. Or? I didn't see it. Oh. But just that, it, yeah, reminded and it feels me. off in here. A skinny arm and like, and like. <coughs> that's back. what it just looked like. I swear to God. If he saw you, can you say yes? Did something? Horrific happened to you down here. Get out right here. Yeah. The EVP playback session got cut short because Keith heard what sounded like a female whisper in his ear. I just heard someone whisper in this room. It sounded like you were standing right next to me and whispered in my ear just now. Yeah, it sounded like yeah, it sound of the, a woman's voice, like right here, very soft, real faint whisper. And I thought and it was, was you, man. You. And then I saw. Uh, it was first a sense that someone was standing in this doorway, and then I saw what looked like someone might have like reached their hand out, and then I blinked and it was gone. Get out of here! Get out of here! If he saw you, he said yes. We're gonna be there all rushing at once. Sorry for catching you off guard. I know we're not supposed to be in here. Can you tell us your name? We couldn't make out what this EVP said at the time, but when I enhanced the audio, this sent chills down my spine. So it was almost like, you know, it said, get out. We didn't move and it's like, get out of here. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. We might have walked in on somebody taking a shower. I'm thinking if you saw an arm. Right. My first thought is arm reaching for a towel. Right. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we're back there and it says, get out, get out of here. Mm -hmm. and then on the side. What's that? Recorder dying. Really? Are you serious? Yeah. Dad, why is all my shit dying? It's yeah. all of your stuff. It's all my stuff. <laughs> this battery is already half dead. We just turned on the camera. Dang. Everything was fully charged yeah, I was on say that before we came. Uh, like right. I wouldn't drive seven hours and not charge my equipment. So far, we've had and two yeah. two camera batteries, my full spectrum camera, and now this and recorders. recorders. Yeah, use they last. They last forever. Yeah, huh? it's just because it's just AAA batteries, you know. Right. Been... That's strange. The energy in the basement feels supercharged, so the team decides to split up in hopes of capturing more activity. Group 1 will remain in the shower stall while Group 2 explores room 200 in the basement. What are you doing in here right now? Are you taking a shower? 
Did um, any man ever hurt you in here? This is the most I've ever seen my DR60 go off. Yeah. Yeah. All lights all the time. There's gotta be somewhere else better you can be. I just saw something shoot from your stomach. For my stomach? Yeah. JP captured a light anomaly exiting Steve's stomach area. We debunked this as not being dust or a bug, and as soon as the light anomaly disappeared, the energy in the room subsided. Lost that vibe. Yeah, it's like whatever was here, we kind of just... We annoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Can you come up to us and tell us your name? Alex has a device in his hand. If you walk up to it and talk, we might be able to hear you. Oh, it said... The opposite of police. Police. Can't think of if that's relevant or not, but who oh, said horse? Horse. Yeah, right. come in. Yeah, what should we do? The opposite <coughs> said police and horse, which that doesn't sound relevant to me. But police and horse. Okay, so down in the basement, under the uh, the old Civil War side, first room on the right. The correlation to that is in the mid '80s, the police station was here. But, and they would have used all of this, yeah. police, uh, with horse, um, I don't even know what to draw with that because, you know, we have a few pictures from the outside of the building where they did have horses, so that's possible something to do with that, but then you're looking at a connection of like almost 80 to almost 100 years worth of time, maybe, maybe they buried a horse on the property, who knows, it's interesting those two would come up at the same time. Hmm. Nothing on here, really. Hmm. You try AM? Yeah, it won't hurt. If you can hear us, can you say hear? <laughs> yep. It was at this moment the team realized their attachment follows them wherever they go, whether the building is protected or not. Unfortunately for Steve, this is his first time encountering the entity. He's welcome here, say his name again. Who are you? So, if you're here, can you set off? Wait. Move just how you did again. I just saw a shadow out there. What, from the right side of the door to the left? Inside here? No, no, it was out there. It was against that back wall. Did Steve just see the entity known as the team heads to the hallway to investigate but come up empty-handed. They decide to move upstairs to explore the first and second floor of the Civil War building. It just said Z climbed. And the thing about Z, Z is a seven and then an inverted seven upside down. Also says a Z climbed. Like what, climbed up the stairs with us? You following us up here? It's like a bridge right here. Or are you climbing up these stairs right now? I think that's so breathe. It's like on my face. And I heard like a tap up there or something. The team made its way up to the first floor of the Civil War building and began experiencing activity right away. After placing the mail meter on the staircase, Steve feels an ice cold breeze, followed by a loud tapping sound coming from the second floor. <coughs> this 
the device on the stairs. If you get close enough to it, it'll light up and it'll make sound. It'll let us know you're here. I wasn't even cold in the I'm getting like chilled. Can you make a loud bang so we know you're up there? Keith just asked the spirit to make some sort of noise. With enhanced audio, you can hear the EVP of a spirit inviting him upstairs. Is dead? Yep. Another one. Ooh, it's a devil. They have like 200 minutes on them each. Easy. Dude, you know, why is it only affecting your It's all your stuff, dude. It's all my camera stuff. That's insane. That worries me about him being alone and the water dropping and stuff, it, it, that worries me. If you can hear me and you're purposely messing with Steve's stuff, make a knocking noise for me. Just do something like this. We hear there is a seven foot tall shadow man on this hallway. Are we going to see you this weekend? Is there somebody messing with Steve's equipment? Can you come out and talk to us? Say something, move something, make any type of noise so that way we know that you can hear us. You hear that, Rick? Did you say get out? I thought it was get out. I don't agree with what the union wants to do. Yeah. Nah, I heard that. You hear that, Rick? I don't know what I heard. What? I heard fuck you. So right now we are going to split up. We're gonna have Keith and Steve go up in the attic because you guys haven't been yet. We were there last night. And then we're gonna go to the other side. Good luck. <laughs> Sweet, thanks. Have fun. As the team makes its way towards their selected destinations, Keith and Steve quickly begin to feel like they're not alone. Hello? Hey, it's us. Okay. <laughs> we're driving an hour away. Don't worry, they were all dead when we got down here. Yeah. The two camcorders are dead, yeah. Both camcorders are dead? Yeah. Who's this over there? Mine. These are both yours. Yeah. And they're both dead. Yes. So every, all three of his cameras. And they definitely haven't been three hours. Okay, so my camera's upstairs in the attic. And if mine's not dead, yours is. That's weird. Let's see if we can capture that uh, woman that was buried. Or supposedly buried. Was there a woman buried in this room? We hear the stories and. Um, it's pretty sad if that's the truth. I'm sorry. Supposedly, a woman was buried right here, where I'm pointing, because she was having an affair with a man. It's horrible. It's, it's just unethical and it's not right. So if this story is true, and the woman is still here and you can hear me, I want to apologize. Sorry that that happened to you. Let's watch out, you got a big beam right in front of you. Oh yeah. Should have brought my head lamp. Yeah. If there's anybody up here with us that wants to communicate, I have a device in my hand. If you walk up to it and you talk nice and loud, we should be able to hear you. My name is Keith. I'm here with my friend Steve. Can you tell us your name? Keith captures a light anomaly mysteriously flying towards them in the attic. We debunk this as not being dust or a bug, but possibly one of the spirits trapped here with us in the attic. Whereabouts? Uh, right by that pole. Okay. It was coming towards us. We want to know if what is being told is true. Yes, I see you standing over there. I think you can hear me. Can you wave for me to let me know that you can understand what I'm saying? Wave one of your hands. I see it looks like you're trying. I see you. 
Are you the woman? There you go. Thank you. Wave him. JP just captured the entity waving on the SLS camera. Did he just come in contact with the teacher's aide that was allegedly murdered at the turn of the century? There's a map. Mm -hmm. Should I go stand next to it or what do you think? No, probably stay over here just in case. It's weird because it's standing on the desk. That's what it looks like. And it's gone. I feel a little sad. Really? Yeah. I don't know if it's because I'm like verbalizing the story and like knowing what could have happened. It's pretty messed up, yeah? Yeah, definitely. If you were the woman that was killed by a man because you were having an affair, can you come tell me your name? I think I saw you earlier. If that was you, can you come stand in front of me? Are you walking towards us? Can you knock on something? Let us know you're here. I heard something stand in front of you. Stand in front of you? Is that mm -hmm. my recount of the story about your truth? Is that what really happened? Oh, I hear, yeah, I hear. <laughs> she said, yeah, that happened. Wow. Hello? There was a woman buried here. We're just trying to learn about you. Who all is talking right now? Can you step forward one at a time? Step. 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 One at a time, can you tell us your names? Do you like Vance and, and Kimmel? Can you come through clearly and say something relevant to us? Bob? Guys? Oh, what's up? We were just making sure it was you guys. We were in that laundry room place. No, it looks like I put a light anomaly fly towards us up in the attic. He's the only one he got. It wasn't like a bunch of dust or anything flying around, so. We were, we were having a pretty crazy session. We're at? Uh, in that laundry room. Really. Yeah, it was pretty good. We, it said Kimmel and Vance and... Oops, and uh, Kimmel? Yeah, it said Kimmel twice. As the first night comes to an end and the sun begins to rise over Madison Seminary, the team breaks down their equipment and exits the Civil War building for some much needed rest. The following evening, they explore the town and some local shops. All right, so right now we are at one of the most scary, terrifying places besides the seminary down the road. Miss Candy and the Red Berry Candy Shop. Let's go! I bet you this is gonna be a sweet investigation. Dude, we should get a beam, beam boozle and film us playing it. You ever played that? No. First up is Alex oh. from Spectrum. What are you hoping for? I'm hoping for a uh, peach bar. That's <laughs> not pretty good. Right, strawberry, so or strawberry or dead, dead fish. Dead fish. Oh, I'm sure. I don't smell it, you gotta eat it. It tastes kind of like the peach bar, but <laughs> it is good though. Okay, so you got so peach then. So you got, you got, you got peach or something? I got peach. Alright, right, we gotta so. go into the battle. <laughs> boiled milk or coconut. Ah. <laughs> That's spoiled milk. <laughs> oh, sad. It's, uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm first now. I'll take it. Let's see what we get. Ugh. <laughs> the coconut's <It> worse. <laughs> <laughs> 
gets worse over time. <laughs> oh, really? You got a booger juicy or pear? juicy pear? Oh, booger. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> so not juicy no, pear? No, no, it's, it's long clippings. It tastes like grass. <laughs> so you it's long, yeah, I got this one here. Are you sure? Yeah, uh, oh, it's, 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 it's grass. Like grass. It's grass. It's grass. It's not so good. It's my turn, and then you're next. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Oh, moldy, moldy cheese. cheese. Oh, dude, yeah. I, I'm shaking, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that one was. <laughs> That's definitely not good, whatever it is. <laughs> Which one is it? Moldy cheese. Oh, my eyes are watering. <laughs> <coughs> I'm probably gonna get like double dare or something at the day two of them. Oh, uh, so luckily, he's got the double dare. I dare you to take like a handful. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh! I got two good ones. We got a volunteer. This one might be rotten egg. You want me to do one at a time or all at the same time? All at the same time. Oh Don't my god. Oh, oh my god. Do Is he really doing it? it? <laughs> Not a single one of those was one of the good flavors. <laughs> Not a single one. <laughs> now let's go hunt some ghosts. Yeah, let's do it. It's got to be better than this. Yeah. You're handling it like a boss. Uh, I feel like a wimp bringing this up, but me and Keith were talking earlier at dinner and we kind of don't think we should do all night solos. I mean, we discussed that, that we were going to do that, so... The energy here, though, is just way too much. It's it's more <laughs> than we thought than when we got here. That was kind of like the whole plan of the thing was to do one night group, see what we get, and one night completely solo yeah. and see what we get. So to like kind of switch that all around. Y'all seriously, can y'all can handle being alone? Yeah. I don't know, man. It just seems so unsafe. We don't have any way to watch each other. Or... Yeah, I'm definitely freaked out about it, man. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I, I know, like it sounds like unmanly to do, but yeah, I mean, if you guys don't feel comfortable doing that, I mean, what if, maybe we can do some time limit. Yeah, like a smaller, smaller section of the night. We, we still do get, solos. Yeah, we gotta mean. get solo. Because uh, I think it'll it'll produce a different type of activity, a different type of you know evidence if we if we do solos but if we mm -hmm. don't want to do the whole night we don't have to but do a chunk of time at least each on the asylum floor we haven't hit there really yet <laughs> you don't, you want to do that i just i can't do all that man there's no way yeah all right let's, let's do right, we'll do that i'll take sarah's room <laughs> all right yeah we'll, we'll figure that out all right i'm gonna cut the cameras all right I'll cut you can go ahead and cut that one keith all right. um i'm gonna take the the one over there by keith uh, upstairs so we can get ready and set it up. All right. Um, but you are seriously okay with, you know, us doing this the time solos, right? Yeah. I mean, we don't want to make you guys uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. If I mean, we we need to do it a little bit, but we don't want to push you guys past where you're comfortable. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, cool. it's cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, man. So we're gonna set this up and we'll be back. We're, uh, we're little bitches. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. I understand. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah. I got an idea, Steve. So, to amp the place up tonight, I'm thinking we do a sort of ritual, uh, calling of the corners, um, maybe even some Ouija board, uh, maybe amp it up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, last night we had a pretty good session, a couple of good sessions, but we need to do something to bring the building more alive, I think, tonight. So, whatever we need to do, I'm up for because you know yeah. we all made this trip, so I want it to be worth it. And I think if we give it a little nudge, we're gonna be surprised with what we get. So I don't think it's a bad idea. I think so too. Just this location's it has a lot to offer. I think if we really push it a little bit, it's gonna be it's gonna be worth it. Yeah, push a couple of buttons and see what happens. Cool. For it, let's do it, boys, boys, boys. What's up? Me and Steve had an idea. We did. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, looks on your face. I know. <laughs> I'm nervous. Well, like, so last night we had a pretty good session in the basement. It kind of cooled off after that. And we think that if we just kind of amp it a little bit, we'll amp, get... Amp? What does amp mean? Well, I was just thinking we do a sort of ritual uh, calling of the corners to kind of 
draw the spirits, all the spirits we can here. Did you say Lift. a ritual? Sort of. Yeah, a sort of. Dude, I know the kind of shit you're into. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing. And what kind of ritual are we talking? A, I, it's just a calling on the corners. We're gonna. We need, first of all, we have to all do it together. So we're gonna go to each corner of the building. We're gonna call to the spirits of each cardinal direction: northwest, south, and east. Uh, we're gonna lift the veil, brace basically, and then at the end, we're gonna come to the center of the building. Uh, we're gonna be using a sigil. For is this like safe? Because like we already well, didn't want to do solos, so. <laughs> well, we're not technically summoning anything evil or anything. We're just calling upon sure? spirits. Like you're sure that's what you're not doing. Like I mean, how can you be sure? We're calling exactly. upon I mean, anybody, really. I mean, we need something just to. You drove twenty hours. I mean, we want we want that thing. You know, that one thing at least that is really kind of. And here's the trick. This is where I need Keith. Because I want to do a Ouija session with Keith. I've always wanted to. Ritual and a Ouija session. And then isolation after that? Yeah. But we're going to do the shorter isolation, so... How do you feel? <laughs> uh, how sure are you it's not demons? You know, I mean... Positive. We're not going to ask for demons, so... It's all about intent, too. I mean, when you're going yeah. to use it. So I want us all to go out there. Positive intent. We don't want anything evil, but we're just going to try to bring in some more spirit, some more action. I mean, whatever. Uh, Everyone wants to do it. I'm, I'm on board, but... I'm not really happy about it, but I guess I'll do it. You cool with... It's, it's one of those things, like, a kid trick-or-treating goes and asks for candy, and somebody could throw in crackers. You know, like, what if we get a cracker? <laughs> you know, we get a demon. A razor blade? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, it's gonna be fun. All right. Fuck it. Let's, let's do it, I guess. All right, let's do it. All right. Cool with Luigi? Yeah, man. Let's do it. It might not. It, sometimes it doesn't even move. Like for me alone, I never get moving. Yeah, so, all right, let's go. I've, I've never had a good Come experience on. with the Ouija board. Let's do it. Whatever. We're gonna go to each four corners of the building, and with this, I'll be tracing a sigil. And at each location, we're gonna call upon spirits from the north, west, south, and east. Dude, this is. I don't do these type of things, so I'm kind of like. I don't know, I just feel really strange about it. I mean, I've never done one, but I feel like <clears throat> we need to do something to just give it the actual little push tonight. Okay. I've done it before, and let's just say things got interesting. We're calling upon the spirits of the north, east, south, and west. Come and join us at Madison Seminary tonight. We're lifting the veil completely. We want full interaction with you. Do as you please. Run the halls with us inside Madison Seminary on this night. Even just hearing that once, it gives it a whole different feeling. Are you cool? Yeah, man. I mean, right. I'm, I'm just going to take y'all's words for it and see what happens. We are completely lifting the veil. We want full interaction with any spirits that want to communicate with us. I've known you for a while, Alex, so I'm trying to put my trust in you and and stuff, but this is just like crossing a line I never thought I would I would cross, so. We want you to join us tonight in Madison Seminary. This building right here, we're completely lifting the veil. We want complete communication with you. Please join us tonight. Now, we we'll go to the center and complete the ritual. I'm thinking for the we're calling upon the spirits of the north, east, south, and west. We're inviting you in tonight to Madison Seminary. We're completely lifting the veil. We want to have full communication, full yeah. interaction with you. What was that? Sound like a woman. That was like a woman moaning. We want to have full interaction with you. We're lifting the veil completely. Come and join us for a Ouija board session. What did you do, Alex? <laughs> We have here the Devil's Toy Box, which is basically the inside is all covered with mirrors. So the idea is that some people say it acts like a portal. Others say that, you know, the spirit will get inside there and not be able to get out because the mirrors are all facing each other and it kind of is just trapped in this box. 
We're gonna test it out. We've never really used one before, so. And we're gonna put it in the closet. Yeah, put it in the closet, the infamous closet. They did say that someone tried to stick their fingers underneath it and it actually got bit by something. Hello? I just heard like a hissing sound. My fingers are on the other side. Can you see them? It's really cold there. <laughs> Nothing though? No, it's really cold there though. But you'll feel it. You'll open the door and I personally have been there when somebody has opened it, just like a joke. And there's just this cold rush of air will like run straight through me. Uh, what we're thinking is putting something from the room inside the box as well as the DR60. Rolling, placing the DR60 down into Devil's Toy Box. I shut it. Mm -hmm. Shut the box and we'll put the lid on. Do you guys think we should? I said close the door, right? Yeah. 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 What is in the closet? Is the closet a portal of some kind or some kind of doorway to another to the other side? Okay, you want to get the PR60? Yeah, let's try okay. it. You want to grab it? Bingo. grab it. Touch it. You can get to touch, touch it. All right, good. All right, go for it. While reviewing the DR60 session in Sarah's room, the team heard a resounding crash sound resonate throughout the second floor. We had the entire building to ourselves and could not find the source of the crash. Was something trying to lure us out of Sarah's room with the closet door open? Oh my God. So, uh, one, of, one of these microphones out here on these cameras. Oh, they definitely like that. Yeah. We get out with Crystal. <coughs> right after that, there was that huge noise. We got out of the room. It did what it wanted us to do. The closet's open. That's what it wanted. Yep. It wanted the door left open. So it made a noise somewhere else. We weren't running to investigate. Mm -hmm. And we left the door open. What you thinking? Me? Put it in there again and yeah. try to get it. Yeah. Roll. Any of Quarter, Do you like having that closet door open? If you want us to open that closet door again, say open door. 
Did you make the loud crashing sound? Me too. I just heard something in the hallway. What was that? That was down in the engine. This is the second time that the team is interrupted with a loud bang coming from the hallway. As they head out to investigate the sound, Keith feels the sensation of being grabbed on his forearm. I got a really weird sensation on my right arm right now, like someone's squeezing my forearm. Really? Yeah. Can you lift your sleeve up? I wonder if you have any like markings. Yeah, right there. I that one. I don't know. And I feel ice cold, man. Like chills. Oh man. It feels like someone was gripping my forearm just now, like move. It's like every time we open that closet door now, it's like that's twice now. Something happened. Something's let us outside the room. Something yeah, let us outside. Yeah. Uh, A noise out here. Right. To get us out here with the door open again. Right. What? What the? F what could that even be? The screen. That's the only thing. I mean, like, what could that even be? Let me hear that up close. And it's right after I asked if you want the door open, say open door. Yep. <sighs> Oof. That's a naughty noise. Yeah, I got chills. Get the hell out. Get the yeah, hell out. Get the hell out. Yep, that's exactly what it's Open it. Open it. Dude, it's, you can hear him say, open it. Open it, and then you Then I think it. you open the door. Right. And then it goes, open it. Open it. That's clear as day, man. You hear the breath in that. Open it. Open it. That has a vocal tone breath. Dude. And that right. scream. That Dude, scream, and then get the insane. hell out. That's insane. I, what I'm feeling is like maybe someone grabbed my hand, like, right. like get hurry, out. hurry up yeah. and let's get out of this room. Like, like and then we, we opened all... it up, you know what I mean? And then like, come on, let's go. It's like grab me on the forearm and just and like. That's the second time that we've had something try to get us out of that room, and then we th get the hell out, like. Right. And then it says open it, and you hear the breath. Yeah. So and there's no just... denying that that's not. No, that's a that's voice. What happens if we do it one more time? Like Adam was saying, he doesn't think this was a child child's room. If you think about it. We haven't caught a single thing that would point in the direction of a child. Right. You know what I mean? Sarah doesn't necessarily mean a little kid. He said it could have been somebody with dementia or somebody that has the mental capacity of a child. Who who grabbed my arm? Can you tell me your name? I kicked something up the That was a creaky sound too. That was a telephone. <laughs> We're gonna keep the door shut. Did you hear that? Mm hmm. That was Closer. behind you. We're gonna keep the box shut too. Whoa! What'd you hear? Dude, something in that closet just fucking moved. I swear. Was it that sound? No. It was in the fucking closet. That box or something, that doll or something in that fucking thing moved. So I said, your fingers on her try it. I thought I heard footsteps. Why did I just make another noise? Earlier that night, Steve kicked a toy telephone on accident. But now another child's toy in Sarah's room is lighting up and making sounds. Was this toy triggered by our motion and vibration? Or did the energy changing in the room trigger the object to suddenly turn on? Dude, I swear to God, I heard a noise in here. Where and I know for a fact that this recorder picked it up. Yeah, let's, let's, let's close it up, seal it up tight before we play yeah, it back. Every time we're trying to play it back, when something happens, it makes us get out. Right.
The DR-60 captures a bizarre sound inside the devil's toy box, followed by a very disturbing message. Could this be the voice of one of the spirits that haunt this closet? Viewer discretion advised. I don't know. That sounds similar to the noise I heard in there. Dude. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's that's the noise that I heard in there. No, no, get out. No, get the hell out. Maybe I already got out. Like we had, we've had open window long enough yeah. now. It's, it's, it's out into the building. We already let them out. So guys, we are going to do a frequency opening. Basically, we're going to amp it up a little bit even more than I did last time. So we're going to have them all scanning all around the room. Scanning through all the frequencies. We're completely lifting the veil tonight. We want complete communication, complete interaction with you. We have all these frequencies for you to come through. For you to manifest completely for us. We want to see you, we want to feel you, we want your full presence tonight. We're opening up the frequencies. Join us for a Ouija board session. Oh man. I'm not going to say what I just heard. I heard it. Yeah, you heard it. <laughs> That was clear as day. It was loud. Loud as voice we've so far. Yeah. He heard it. He heard it. Yeah, he heard it. Did you hear that? Yeah. I heard it. Oh, hear shit. It? Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear that whistle just now? Yep. Another whistle. Dude, that was a two-tone whistle. Like... Unexpectedly, Keith and Steve just heard a loud whistle from down the hallway. The onboard microphone from one of the static cameras captured the disembodied whistle. Are they all on? Yeah. They're all on, I believe. It's weird, the uh, startup words on the obelisk was intern and paralysis. Spirit, spirits, we haven't got all day. Spirit, spirits, don't worry about knocking. Spirit, spirits, just come right on in. If so, move the planchette to yes. I have a sensation like someone's hovering over my back, like almost like reaching their arms around me. It feels like my peripheral vision's getting darker, almost like someone's hovering over me. Can you move this planchette? I can feel it like wants to move. Yeah, it's it's got tension on it. Who's here with us right now? Can you tell us your name? Never. Come over there, one of those. Let's say planchette. I thought so. I heard spirit. How many spirits are here with us right now? We want to talk to you. My hands are getting ice cold. Right yeah. Now. My hands are freezing. I'm hearing music. They're just steady music, though. And it's like a weird song or something. Like, this is the one playing music. Okay. Is it still scanning? It's not scanning. Here. I would just leave it like that because they, they get quiet whenever they're not scanning. But that's weird that it stopped me first. Just cause those no, don't those do don't stop, yeah. I'm fighting the urge to want to go over there by myself. I saw you on your off there. Yeah, something wants me over there. That's where the whistle came from earlier. Yeah, it wants me to go down the hallway. I feel okay. I just feel like something's drawing me over there. Don't go in that one room. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It was just like... Like, I just wanted, I just felt the urge to come over here. I was standing here, and at one point I almost got to the point where I was like facing a corner. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. My memory, I left, I walked out of the room, I went out, and I went down the stairs, I went right down to the, the break room. And when they got up to the, uh... is it hard to breathe in here? 
No. Feeling a little weird? Yeah, it's like a lump in my throat when I'm trying to swallow and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but when they were coming up to get me, they said they got to the landing right at the base of the stairs here right at the top. And they said when they came around the corner, I was standing there with my hands in my pockets, standing at the top of the stairs, just staring out the window. It's pitch black out, so I can't see anything. I was just staring out the window. Um, lost my train of thought. Okay. Yeah. yeah right. Um. Oh, they said they came up and they um said my name, mm-hmm. and that's when I kind of like looked at them, but didn't acknowledge. Like I didn't say anything to them. I looked at them, um, but I don't remember that part. At yeah. all. I just remember coming out of the room, going downstairs. So it's just something so unsettling when you like can't remember what you just did. Dude, there's there's something in there. There's something in here, man. Yeah. Something's up, man. Something's in there. Something's up. Let's go back over here, though. I want to see what they're doing over here. It probably recognizes you, and it knows it can do it to you. So let's just get away from there for a second. All I wanted to do was drop Shovel. Wanted to what? Just go behind you and shove you. I don't really know why. Really? Like when we were coming out of the room, I wanted to go around. You were out first. I like in my mind saw like as soon as you walk out, me running and slamming the door behind you. Yeah, it want it wants to separate you right now. It wants it wants you by by yourself. Steve's having a weird experience right now with that room he had experience in before. You're right. He was trying to, he wanted to be aggressive towards me. You feeling all good? I'm not. We want you to stop messing with Steve and come over here and talk to me and Keith. We want to see you really move the plane chair across the board. He wants to go back to the other side and stay in that room. JP notices Steve slowly wandering back towards the room where he had his previous experience. He keeps a close eye on him and eventually the team decides to head down the hallway to investigate the ominous room together. I'm watching you, man. You're not going over there. He, he keeps looking back at me to see if we're watching him. Where are you going? Where are you going? I won't go all the way. How you feel, Steve? I'm alright. Just kind of waiting. For? I don't know. Something. Maybe someone who was in here had bad knee problems. No, I heard like a shuffling over here. Hello? I know there's something in here, because like when we were just in here before and you guys were down there, I said he was like, okay, we should get out of here, like we should leave. And as soon as he got out, all I like pictured was like running up behind him and slamming that door. Right behind, yeah, slamming it closed behind him. And I walked out and I was still standing there and he's like, come on, like let's go, let's go. I kept telling him something fell off and he's like, let's go. So we walked down, we went down there. Um, we were down there for a minute, and then we were coming back, walking down this hallway. I was looking at the back of him, and all I wanted to do was go up behind him and just shove him. I wanted to just go push him for some reason. He's like, not like he was going to fall down the stairs or anything. There's no reason to push him. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like he was... Well, it's not your thought anyway. I don't know. I, don't know. I just don't get what put, like, why push him. Like, you know what I mean? What does that do? If we were cool with leaving you in here with the door shut, do you want to? Kind of. Yeah. See, that's not good. That's not a good answer. Yeah, I kind of want to. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're here all night, so it's not like we can't come back up yeah, here. That's what I saw last night, you know? And I, I'm not gonna be back out here until probably like May again. What if we, uh, what if we kill the, the spirit boxes, come back in here and do like a EVP session? Do it in Panasonic? Yeah. Yeah. The team lures Steve out of the room by convincing him we will come back to conduct a DR60 session. They knew Steve needed to get out of the room to clear his head of any negative energy. All right, so right now we came back up here as a team Obviously, Steve has some unfinished business in this room. 
but uh, we feel like it's smarter as of right now to come up here with him and do a DR60 session. So let's see what happens. All right, y'all ready? Yep. All right, Steve, you do the talking, okay? Mm -hmm. What do you want from me? Do you mean me harm? What do you want from me? Do you mean me harm? Saying some what stuff. Do you want from me? Tell me what you need. Am I in danger? Are you the woman I've been seeing in my dreams? Tell me what you need. Tell me what you need. Help. Help. Am I in danger? Are you? I think it sounded like I said no, you're not in danger at the end. It feels, it doesn't feel like it did earlier. No, it doesn't. No, I'm good. You can even tell that you're like a little more. I'm relaxed. I'm very relaxed. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Man? I don't know if I should do a solo up here. You don't think so? You don't have to. There's other spots in the building. And how, y you and Alice can switch. I don't know. Let me think about it more, but. Okay. I don't know. If we had done it right after the first one, I probably would've. Mm -hmm. But, but like, you, you have a different head yeah, right now. Yeah. Exactly. But let's go downstairs and discuss the, the solo is, missions. We decided to make the solo missions a little more interesting. First off, we're going to do 30 minutes alone um, in the spot that we randomly choose. We decided to do it randomly, and Keith is going first because we did a random number generator, and his number was picked first. This is not coffee. And, he, and that means, wait, wait, wait. So him going first means that the opportunity for him to get a scarier spot is heightened because nobody else has picked it, so. And I just want to go on record again. I do not want to do a solo. I don't want to even look. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. No way. You go to the basement. Basement. The reason why we're laughing is because when we discussed spots that we were going to go to before we decided to do a random draw, uh, he said he was going to do the basement, and then... Fate picked the basement, which kind of makes it even scarier. Yeah, and why are you scared? Because now it's like I'm being drawn to the basement. I have kind of a fear of basements. Mm. I spent many years at my job when I was new going into scary basements, and then Blair Witch Project did not make basements any more fun. You should open it to the camera. That's a good idea. I'll be honest with you. The one place I'm not looking forward to, the one place I prefer not to, is the asylum. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Silver do. War. Oh, so you got the so first. I got the first and second floor of the Civil War. What's scary is we kind of ignored that side yeah. all night. You know where it's probably going to send me? It's calling you. You know where. I already know where. I'm kind of nervous about you doing that, but if you and him decided to do the random thing, so you got to go I through with it. it. It's just asylum. Oh, God. This That's is... weird, man. That is weird. So that is the spot where Steve... Has had a bad experience, and tonight is even acting a little weird. <laughs> if you get a free pass, I'm punching you in the dick. <laughs> no way, dude. That's weird. Sarah's, Sarah's room. room. Oh. The only person that didn't get the spot we were going to go to was originally you. was me. Yeah. That's weird. Sarah's room floor was where I saw that shadow figure when me and you were just walking That's around right. during the day. That's right. been the most intense spot tonight. I don't even want to go there. Weirdly I crash. might leave my devil's toy box in that closet because I don't <laughs> want to go back forever. there again. <laughs> it's just there forever. It's just there oh. forever now. All right. Cool. You ready? You guys ready? Yep. After the team pick the locations for their solo missions, they gear up and mentally prepare for this very daunting task. Doing my solo session, 30 minutes in Sarah's room and or the floor where Sarah's room is at. Oh god. Move on to the Civil War side. I have the first and second floor all to myself. 
This place is creepy. All right. I am absolutely terrified. intense up here. Is anybody in here with me? If there is, can you try to make some type of noise? Oh, the feeling being alone is like no other, man. It's, it's intimidating. It's scary. Do not like this. Not a fan of isolation. I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to see my wife and kids. I don't know. Feels off. I can feel you up here. Can you shut that closet door? Man, it's intense. Can you make another sound? That's a daunting task there. Going up there by myself. Makes me kind of nervous, I'm not gonna lie to you. I like talking to them and just treating them like people. You know, they, they were once people. And, um, you know. This year alone, I've been to a lot of locations. This is by far the most active location I've ever been to. And I'm absolutely terrified right now. I'm literally like frozen. Fuck, man. Don't be too mean to me now. I brought you some coins. Man, when that uh, sound happened, whatever fell over here, freaking got pins and needles all over. Man. Make your presence known. If you can hear my voice, Shut that door. That would be the coolest thing you would ever do. And I'm sure you can do it. I bet you can. I don't think it's hard for you. Are you guys hanging out over here? Do you enjoy the peace and quiet? Because it's really quiet. Really, really quiet.
I don't know, man. I really don't. I thought it wasn't gonna open. That would have been terrible. What are you? Can you say Sarah? If you can hear me through this, can you say hi? If we're going to be friends, I want to know what your name is, so I can talk to you. Is that okay? Is there anybody you have a message for? Hello? Can you hear me? That was my jacket. The bride's room. Hello. It said caress. Okay. It said caress as we were passing. I can't remember this dude's name, but uh, supposedly he raped somebody. All right, I'm gonna try to go upstairs now. Are you up here? This floor is different than the other floor. Can you come sit down and, and have some tea with me? Can you sit in that chair right there and have some tea? This room, I felt drawn to this room when I was walking by. It like attracted me. I, th I think that there might be something in here. Are you in this room with me? How did you die in the war? What were you getting treated for in this hospital? Are you in this room with me? I'm leaving now. Is there anything else? It's so quiet up here. It's freaky quiet. I don't even know where to go. It's cool. Oh my God, that scared me. That's my timer. My 30 minute solo session is up. I turned the light on up there, I couldn't even do it. Really? I couldn't fucking do it. I didn't even go down that hallway. Don't feel bad, man. I came running up He just, here. yeah, he just came back. My solo experience was intense. Felt very brave about doing it. Once I got up there, you could uh, feel the, the chill in the air as I approached Sarah's room where we had left the closet door open all night. I walked into the room, I kind of panned around to the closet, and then all of a sudden behind me near the back window, I hear some something shifted or there was some like thud and something shifted in my heart freaking sank. I was like, oh my God, my heart started racing. You can clearly see that I was freaked out. It was, it was fun though. I'm glad I did it. As an investigator, we always have to try to push ourselves. And uh, when you hear a sound like that, you can't run. You have to stay, fight it out, see if anything else happens. The rest of the solo session was 
pretty slow. I did get some interesting spirit box replies though. Let's talk about my solo session. One of the things I've been dreading for this whole trip was the solo isolation session. I got the basement, which is bittersweet because I actually wanted the basement. The main reason I wanted the basement is because it's the closest location to home base. So I know if I needed to come running back, it was a pretty short run and I did come running back. I was down there for a total of 11 minutes before I chickened out. I started hearing the sounds of water drops. And then at one point I went into room 200 where we were capturing activity the night before and I started seeing shadow movement towards the back. It was through a window and I realized it's a bush or a tree outside but it was just really freaking me out. Especially since everyone else here has seen shadow figures outside of the building. So being that there was something Outside that window moving, it, I just could not really relax. I backed myself up against the wall so my back wasn't exposed and I still didn't feel safe. Madison Seminary is probably one of the most active locations I've ever been to. And I can't wait to come back. Being solo inside of Madison Seminary is intimidating. It was pretty scary. I didn't have much happen to me, but the feelings that I felt while I was walking through the hallways and just knowing that Something was probably at the end looking at me. Oh man, that feeling is not fun. I am glad that I did it because I kind of feel like it's a small victory and a win. This place is no joke. The spirits here want to communicate and they definitely make themselves known and sometimes they get a little mad and they like to mess with people more than they should, but that's all part of what we do, I guess. Dude, I saw some shit when I got up there that, I think that's what stopped me. I want to go back up there. All right, so for my isolation session, I drew the asylum. Like I said, I think there's something up there that wants me up there. Walked like right through the threshold of the, the doorway into the rec room area, and off to the left, I saw quickly a couple shadows darting. It was so quick that I kind of didn't really register it at first. It hit me again that there's a hundred eyes on you right now, and you're not alone even though you think you are, but the only difference is you can't you can't see these people. So I kind of told myself, all right, let me, you know, calm myself down, work my way in. I walked in and turned on one of the lights in the room so I could kind of just gain my, you know, composure back and, and kind of get ready for what was going to happen. I don't know if that's a good thing. So I pretty much stopped playing back the recorder, left the light on and just walked away. Dropped the camera to my side and walked away. I was defeated and it sucks because I don't let places do that to me, but this place is, it's not normal. I need to finish. I just couldn't do it tonight. All right, I just want to say something. We are finished. We're pretty much done with this documentary. It's been intense, it's been crazy. And I just want to say like, Steve and Keith, you know, I don't think that you guys should be ashamed or, or feel any type of way for not being able to finish the solos because this place is no joke. This is real, this is real. Um, I know people were watching this and they're probably thinking, oh, I could do that. You can't say that until you're here and then you actually do it. I just wanted to put that out there that this is, this is, this is what it's like. Yeah, I'm